Welcome to Weekend in Norfolk. Set in the hills of this picturesque community, you will find the Norfolk Curling Club. NCC is a nonprofit two sheet curling club which typically operates from mid October to mid April. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing health crisis, the club remains closed for the 2020 2021 season. So, we decide to take things in a virtually different direction. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make the ice the members curl on? Never? Really? Well, I'll bet you're wondering now. This process takes several days, many hours, and a team of dedicated volunteers. John Barbagallo, NCC's lead ice technician, is responsible for all things ice related and therefore sets the ice making schedule. His assistant, Mike Van Ness, will walk you through the process. Follow him as he transforms a plain gray slab of concrete to two glistening sheets of curling ice, ready for the first stones to be delivered. Please take advantage of all that Norfolk has to offer, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Thank you for joining me on this virtual ice making journey. Now to start with, the key to making good curling ice is an age old secret, cold temperatures and water. Simple, isn't it? Well, not really that simple. The water is very important in this case. We use deionized filtered water. I mean, think about it. When you're getting ready to throw a 40 pound stone down the ice more than 100 feet and have it stop within inches of where you're aiming, you want the cleanest, purest ice you can have so that the stone won't pick up any debris. That being said, let's start our journey. It all starts with a bare concrete slab. Well, maybe not exactly bare, at least since our members discovered pickleball. But once the courts are removed, it's time to clean the slab and boardwalk and turn on the chiller. We monitor the temperature of the slab, and once the slab is cool enough, we spray multiple layers of DI water on the slab to create a thin layer of ice across the entire surface. Once the thin layer of ice is complete, it's time to seal the edges. Sealing is done by applying drywall tape where the sideboards meet the slab, and the tape is sprayed with DI water to freeze it into place. Next, the hack plates are placed in the appropriate locations and set into place by spraying them with DI water. Once the tape is securely frozen to the slab and the sideboards, it's time to spray more DI water across the entire surface of the curling rink multiple times to seal the tape and set the hack plates prior to flooding. Once we're certain the edges are sealed, it's time to flood the rink. The ice is built up in very thin layers until we have a smooth, uniform, and reasonably level surface. As you can see here, the ice is as gray as the slab underneath. It's now time to paint the ice in order to get that bright white look. The paint is a titanium dioxide pigmented powder that must be mixed with DI water and sprayed on the surface of the ice. Now beware, mixing paint is a hazardous process. Only qualified trained individuals should perform this operation. Now, multiple thin layers of the paint mixture are applied to the surface of the ice and then allowed to set up. Once the paint layers have frozen, 
The paint must be sealed by again spraying multiple thin layers of DI water over the surface of the rink. Once the paint is sufficiently sealed, it's once again time to flood with a few thin layers of ice. Once a nice, smooth, uniform layer of ice covers the painted surface, the houses can be placed at both ends of the sheets. The houses are laid out as flat as possible and set into place by spraying DI water under and on top of the houses. Okay, you know the drill by now. Again, multiple layers of DI water are sprayed over the houses to seal them into place so they won't float to the surface when the ice is flooded. Now that the houses are sealed into place, the rink is once again flooded with multiple thin layers of DI water. The exact number of layers that will be applied depends on how thick the ice must be to cover any ripples or imperfections in the houses. Once the houses are covered and the surface is uniform, the lines and remaining artwork can be applied to the ice and sealed with DI water. Again, enough DI water must be applied to the lines and the artwork to prevent it from releasing and floating to the surface when the sheets are flooded. After a couple of floods, it's time to finish the preparation of the ice surface to create the proper texture. This is a good time for pebbling practice. Multiple layers of pebble are applied, and then the ice is scraped. This process is repeated a few times until the ice surface meets the approval of our lead ice technician. John, you remember John. Now the hacks can be put into place, and the centers of the houses can be drilled to accept the measuring device. Now we will do one final pebble and a quick nip. The ice is now ready for curling. Even with all this work, the ice is considered green. It will still be a couple of weeks before the ice reaches its peak performance. Thank you for joining us on this brief ice making tour. For a brief explanation of curling, please visit Curling, a two minute guide on the World Curling TV channel on YouTube. For more information on the sport of curling, visit USA Curling at www.usacurling.org. And for more information about our club and our upcoming season, please visit www.norfolkcurlingclub.org. Thank you for attending A Weekend in Norfolk, and I hope you've enjoyed this virtual tour.